Hello everyone, this is a paper presentation on the ImageNet classification with deep neural networks. This neural, uh, the deep neural network used over here will be the convolutional neural network. So the, this is done on the ImageNet large scale visual recognition challenge. It contains about 1000 categories and 1.2 million training images. The complexity of this classification is very high. To compensate for all the data we don't have, convolutional neural network is used. The final network contains five convolutional and three fully connected layers. Let me briefly explain you what is a convolutional neural network. Convolutional neural network match pieces of the images. So uh, since the images are typically very large and to extract each features or information from them is a very complex task, the concept of filtering is used. To do this, we multiply the required patterns part of the image with the pattern of the image itself. The numbers specify the value of the color it contains. For the sake of explanation, we used only two colors. We add up all the values we get after comparing the filtered part of our image to that of that of the required pattern we are searching for. Uh, the summing and dividing part is called the convolution layer. You can see here by multiplying minus one and one, we get minus one, which results in which shows that the result the pattern has not matched and it gives the minus one in the cell. We sum up all the values we get and divide by the number of cells that is nine over here. We do this for every possible position and find the convolution for the whole image. After doing this, our size of the image re reduces. As you can see, the pattern has not matched fully and hence it gives a result of 0.55. We get something like this, which actually makes sense because our pattern is a diagonal and it, uh, it shows diagonal or uh, matrices uh, once on the diagonal. We represent this convolution operation with circle and an X. After this process, we will have a stack of images for from one image. The next step will be pooling of these layers. We do this since the images are typically very large and to extract features or information from them is a very complex task. To do this, we multiply the required patterns of uh, patterns part of the image with the pattern of the image itself. The numbers specify the value of the color it contains. For we add up all the values we get after comparing the filtered part of our image to that of the required pattern we are searching and divide by the total number of cells that is in our case 9. This summing and dividing part is called the convolution layer. So multiplying by 1 and minus 1, we get uh, minus 1, So which, which is not a match, so we have minus 1 in that cell. Uh, zero point, so we sum up all the values we get and divide by the no, number of cells. We do this for every possible position and find the convolution for the whole image. After doing this, our size of the image re reduces. So we get something like this, which actually makes sense because it, uh, the diagonal, if you, if you see the diagonal, which is the pattern is matching and it has all ones in it. We represent this convolution operation with circle and an X. After this process, we will have a st stack of images from one image. The next step will be pooling of these layers. For pooling, we pick a window size, usually two by two or three by three. Pick a stride, which is the distance of distance of uh, by which we are going to move our window. Walk uh, your window across your filtered images. From each window, take the maximum value. So we select a 2x2 window size, we calculate the maximum value from this window and store it. Then we move by the stride that is 2 here. So we move our window by 2 pixels and choose the ma maximum value in this window. By the end, even if it doesn't fit the window size, we choose the maximum value from 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 minus 0 0.11. We see that the max values are still in the diagonal. So by actually reducing the size, we haven't lost much information. Another advantage of pulling is that it doesn't care where the maximum value is in the window size chosen. So this makes it a bit less focused on the position of the actual pattern and the observed pattern. Even if the pattern is slightly to the left, right or a bit tilted, it will still be captured. We do this for all of our stacked images, so we get a stack of smaller images. The next step is the rectified linear units layer, which is nothing but a normalization layer. The ReLU layer used over here is slightly different from what was being used at that time. The use of ReLU units instead of the standard TANH units in deep convolutional neural networks help it train several times faster. It has been demonstrated using the graph. So this is what happens in a ReLU layer. You will notice that the resultant matrix does not have any negative numbers in it. 
So all layers will look something like this. The input of one layer goes as an output to the other. This is not it. The biggest benefit is that the layers can, can be stacked on top of each other so that the operation built on top of each other. Each time the image gets more filtered as it goes through the convolution layer and smaller when it goes through the pooling layer. Our final layer to be discussed is the fully connected layer. Here every value gets a vote and then using these values we decide which pattern is, de is detected. The voting can be done using any normal neural network classification technique. Here in this paper uh, uh, the softmax classifier has been used. So the final architecture looks something like this. The neural network contains 8 layers with weights. The first 5 are convolutional and the remaining 3 are fully connected. The output of the last fully connected layer is fed to a 1000 wake softmax classifier which produces a distribution over the 1000 class labels. Due to the computational constraints, the network is divided on two GPUs such that the kernels of the second and second, fourth and fifth convolutional layers are connected only to those kernels maps in the maps in the previous layer which reside on the same GPU. The kernels of the third convolutional layer are connected to all kernel maps in the second layer. The neurons in the fully connected layers are connected to all neurons in the previous layer. The ReLU layers follow the first and the second convolutional layers. Max pooling layers follow both ReLU layers as well as the fifth convolutional layer. The ReLU non-linearity is applied to the output of every convolutional and fully connected layer. The third, fourth and fifth convolutional layers are connected to one another without any intervening pooling or normalization layers. Since it is a very big neural network, the number of parameters it uses to classify the data are pretty high, which will lead to substantial overfitting. To avoid this, three techniques are used, data augmentation in two forms and the dropout technique. In phase one of the data augmentation, we generate image translation of size 224 cross 224 patches of the 256 cross 256 images and their horizontal reflections. With uh, the resulting training examples are of course highly interdependent. Without this scheme, the overfitting problem is very high. Uh, at test time, the network makes a prediction by extracting 5 224 cross 224 patches as well as their horizontal reflections, hence 10 patches in all, and averaging the prediction made by the network softmax layer on the 10 patches. In data augmentation phase 2, the consists of altering the intensities of the uh, RGB channels in training images. To each training image, we add multiples of found principal components with magnitude proportion, magnitudes proportional to the corresponding eigenvalues times a random variable drawn from a Gaussian with mean 0 and standard deviation 0 0.1. The third technique is the dropout technique. It involves setting to 0 the output of each hidden neuron with probability 0 0.5. So every time an input is presented, the neural network samples a different architecture, but all these architectures share weights. This technique reduces complex co-adaptations of neurons since a neuron cannot rely on the presence of particular other neurons. It is therefore forced to learn more robust features that are useful in conjunction with many different random subsets of the other neuron. At the test time, we use all the neurons by multiplying their outputs by 0.5 which is a reasonable approximation to taking the geometric mean of the predictive distributions produced by the exponentially many dropout networks. Finally, as you can see in the results, the network achieves top 1 and top 5 test set error rates of 37.5% and 17% on the uh, ILSRC 2010 dataset. The best performance achieved during the competition was 47.1% and 28.2% uh, in the early, earlier release. By the on fall 2019 version of model ImageNet, this paper's results are 67.4% and 40.9% attained by network described above, but with an additional 6 convolution layer over the last pooling layer. The best published results on this dataset are 78.1% and 68.9%. Thank you.